and welcome to Stream Speaks. And in this video, I'm going to go through some of the resources that I used to use and that I still use, um, and that really do help me. Um, I've been asked a few times about whether it's best to use just the one resource for everything or to use multiple resources, hence the purpose of this video. I will cover clinical resources that I use and calculation ones too. And I do hope that you find this video useful. And if you do, why not give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe. Do also visit my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So my absolute very first resource that will always be my first line go to, and that is my absolute bridal die. That is, of course, the BNF. And I tend to use the online BNF more than I use a hard copy purely because I just find it's easy, it's accessible and really easy to search um, different bits and pieces on there. So BNF is definitely my very first go to. Um, however, if I want to find out more information about a particular condition, which I don't think is fully covered in detail in the BNF, then I will go to the NICE CKS guidelines. Years ago, I used to be quite put off using NICE website purely because it wasn't very nice to use. It was quite scattered. It was hard to navigate. Um, and I just found it quite overwhelming and confusing to use. Now though, it's much better structured. And if you're looking, for example, the management of a different condition, it's very easy and obvious to find. Um, so nice EKS for more detail about a particular condition is definitely the resource that I use. If, however, I want to know more information about particular medicine, which again, I don't think the BNF has scoped in a lot of detail, I will then go onto the EMC website, which is the Electronic Medicines Compendium, fun word, um, and on there is hosted the Summary of Product Characteristics, or SPCs, SMPCs, whichever abbreviation you want to use, as well as the Patient Information Leaflet. Um, SPCs are a great resource to use if you want to know more information about pregnancy um, and a particular medicine, breastfeeding, um, shelf life, different excipients that are in different brands. That is such a good resource to use, so much so that I've actually made a video dedicated just on how to use SPCs because the beauty of them is that they're laid out in exactly the same way and so they're just so easy to navigate and use. Um, so yeah, information on a particular medicine, either SPC or sometimes a patient information leaflet will be my go-to if I can't find that information from the BNF or if I just want to know a bit more detail than SPC. The other resource that I do like to use actually is the NHS website, especially if it's for information where I just want quick snapshot information. For example, if it's symptoms about something or causes or um, treatment options, but I don't need it to go in great depth. Examples being um, type two diabetes symptoms or hypothyroidism symptoms, NHS website just beautifully bullet points everything and it's just so easy to find. Um, so NHS website, that's usually what I use the NHS website for. The RPS also, um, the Royal Pharmaceutical Society, they have many different resources. In my pre-reg year, um, what I would usually mostly use it for was actually their information that they have on reclassification of medicines. So what's gone from POM to P, P to POM, etc. Really nice and um, summarised in different uh, in different paragraphs they would put it, uh, depending on what the medicine was. A good amount of information on there too. And again, it's just for that quick sort of bite-sized chunks of information that you want. Um, and then they do have so many other resources on there too, so definitely worth one checking out. For any information about legalities, um, particularly if it's about what can or can't be on a prescription, veterinary prescriptions, what a prescriber, depending on the type of prescriber, what can and can't they prescribe, um, I like to use an MEP. The MEP also is really good for information about control drugs because they have the information displayed really nice and neatly in different tables, comparing schedules through from one to five um, in all sorts of different areas. And again, just a really nicely presented way of looking at information and retaining that information as well. Um, and just general leg legal quiet type queries that you might have, um, sale and supply, for example, how much pseudoephedrine are you allowed to supply, things like that, all contained within the MEP or within one guidance. Um, and I do like to use that resource too. 
Another website which is a really good one is the Specialist Pharmacy Services or SPS website. I used to use this one mostly um, when I would, in my pre-reg year, when I would be doing dosset boxes and checking if a medicine was suitable or not suitable to go into a dosset box. Um, I think that's it's quite a specific query that one um, and so it'd be like where where can you find that kind of information and I used to go to the SPS website for that type of information again they have so many other resources on there as well about different medicines and it goes into greater depth and detail so if that's one that you're not familiar with then make sure to keep that on your radar as well there's also the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare or FSRH website this website is so, so good when it comes to knowing more about emergency hormonal contraceptives, different types of contraceptives. I think in general, that whole chapter, missed pills, it can all be quite confusing to understand. Um, and personally, I find it can be quite hard to absorb all of that information as well. Um, and if I look at the way that it's laid out in the BNF, for me, it, it's it's just a bit too too much words too much information all, all presented in one way with the documentation the guidance that the fsrh produce it's all laid out into different tables they have different scenarios as well they have so many different guidance documents um but the way that the information is presented on there i find it's a lot easier to digest so if you're someone who struggles remembering what contraceptive emergency contraceptive can be given within 72 hours within 120 hours what actually is a missed pill then that's a really really good resource to use there's also the right to breathe website and this is all about inhalers and um, what active ingredients are inhalers what types of inhalers are there and importantly inhaler technique now if you're someone like me who doesn't really retain things from just purely reading things and prefer to watch videos um right breathe do have little videos on there on different inhaler techniques and such like so it is a really good resource to use and i find it's it's a nice easy way to try and digest that, that information as well but there are so many different resources out there and it can be overwhelming knowing which one you should use, which one is the best one to use. But actually, I think using different, using a multitude of resources and using them and pick, pick, picking them out for specific areas. So, for example, BNF being the first one to go to. But then if you want to know more about conditions, go to NICEQS. If you want to know more about medicines, go to the um, SBC for that particular medicine. That's a good way of being able to sort of use all of those resources together. So I'm going to park clinical resources for a moment and talk about calculation resources. Um, by the way, every single website that I've said and I recommend, um, I'm going to put them in the description box below so that you can easily access all that information, including what calculation books I personally used um, to help me through with my pre-reg year. Now you will notice with some of those books though, they are in the very old style of how questions used to be presented for calculations um, pre-2016. I mean, 2016 feels like such a long time ago. Um, but pre-2016, um, it used to all be multiple choice questions for, um, for calculations. I've said this in quite a few of my videos when it comes to calculations. And as someone who admits that calculations was always a topic that I struggled with, for me, I didn't really care what style the calculation question was in. I just wanted to practice as many calculation questions as I could. And I think, and, I, and I'm a true advocate for that being the best way to learn calculations is honestly just practice, 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 practice whatever you can, whether that be past papers, whether that be the current style of questions, whether that be the old style of questions, it's still a good way to practice as many calculation questions as you can. And it helped me, maybe it will help you too. So I'll include those in the description box as well of the books that I found quite helpful to learn calculations. But as I said, there's so many different resources out there. And if there is one that you use, which I haven't mentioned, then please do add it in the comments below. It would be nice if we could get a range of different resources that you all use, whether that be websites, books, apps, anything at all, Put it in the comments below um, about the ones that you recommend and also why you think they're a good one as well. Um, sometimes it can just be easy to say, oh, use BNF. But actually, if you don't know why you should use BNF or why that's a good one to use, then you'd probably be put off 
even exploring it. Um, so yeah, if you could just give a few details of which ones you like to use um, and let's help each other out at the end of the day. It's what we're all here about. And what's, it's what we're all here for. And as mentioned before, if you do like this video, then please do show your support and love and I'd really, really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button too. So until next time, thank you for watching and happy revisings.